And welcome back to Racing Rundown here on YouTube. This is going to be a belated video uh, because we've been looking to do this for the past couple of weeks. We did one a few weeks ago, but we did that before news about Arabian Night broke. So uh, we weren't going to release that since that video was very heavily uh, shaded towards the Arabian Night camp. And since he's no longer on the Kentucky Derby Trail, um, we were, we're going to redo this now. But we're also going to do it in a different formula. Uh, this is, as you can tell by the title, a Derby Power 10 as opposed to the Power 5s that we normally do. And the reason that we're deciding to make this shift is with Arabian Night having dropped off the Kentucky Derby Trail, it really makes things wide open at this point. Uh, which, on the surface, it doesn't necessarily indicate that would be the case because Forte uh, does look like a class apart in the Florida Derby, and should he win that, will I'm not going to say overwhelming favorite, but will be a pretty big favorite. Uh, come Kentucky Derby time, but at the same time, you also uh, have the situation where there's several other horses that are, at the very least, interesting. I'm still of the belief that this is a relatively average crop, but at the same time, uh, it's an interesting group nonetheless. So with that being said, uh, we're going to have this Kentucky Derby Power 5 that we will be doing here, uh, or excuse me, Power 10. I'm used to Power 5 because I don't know when we've done one of these before and if it was one the last time that was. So I'm going to toss it over to Eric for uh, to get things started with the number 10 horse that we're going to rank on this list, and we'll alternate through from 10 to 1. We, we normally count up. Um, we're, things aren't going to be any different here. So I'll go to Eric for number 10 on this list. Thanks, Jack. And at number 10, we will start with the Louisiana Derby runner-up Disarm, a really nice horse uh, for Steve Asmussen, who's a, been a little behind the eight ball uh, by Connections Admission, and also just you can kind of tell by how he's been rushed into these spots, but it ultimately worked out with that second in the Louisiana Derby where he did kind of get shuffled back after being forced to sit mid-pack throughout and had to wait until a hole popped open for him to rally. And he rallied really well, was a clear second-best horse in this spot. Um, but was not able to match Kings Barnes, the ultimate winner. But it was a huge run for a horse, making just his second start against winners, his second start of 2023 um, after running, uh, after being runner-up in an allowance race uh, two back late February at Oakland uh, behind two equals Ripper, where once again was probably a little further back than he really wanted to be. Pace got away from him, and he couldn't match the winner. So two really good runs on the heels of a maiden win last uh, uh, August that had everybody talking, uh, but obviously had to catch up, caught up. But now the big question is, is he seasoned enough to win the Kentucky Derby? Now, personally for me, the, the, I look at this horse not as the type to be able to win a race like that, but a horse that will absolutely just keep getting better as the year goes on and will emerge. And will probably one of the better three-year-olds when the year is over. So this is a nice horse, and if you're willing to take a risk on, on someone come Derby time that doesn't have as much uh, proven on their resume, then this would easily be the horse for you because he's put really good runs together every single start against really good horses and probably third back off the layoff, he'll be in peak form. So uh, definitely an intriguing type who also I absolutely will love getting out to 10 furlongs for the first time. And now we're going to move on to the number nine horse that we're going to rank on this list, and that's the Holy Bull winner from this year, Rocket Can for Bill Mott. And Rocket Can has had a very interesting career through this point. So a couple of bad efforts on paper in his first two starts, but he did start very, you know, relatively early. Um, August, he, it, two maiden races at Saratoga, one in August, one uh, closing weekend at Saratoga. That August maiden race is actually, ironically enough, beaten by Disarm in there. Um, but uh, that was a pretty salty uh, maiden group that showed up there. Obviously, I mentioned Disarm. Wadsworth, who didn't run bad in the Ruby, was also there. So there were a couple of, you know, horses that bounced out of that race, Disarm obviously being the major one, uh, that turned in at least solid efforts in subsequent stakes efforts. Uh, then we go on to his second race, which was a worse um, effort, at least in terms of finish, but a better group that he faced in that start. So you got Instant Coffee, who was the winner of that, who, if he had been entered in the Risen Star, would have accumulated the points to make the Kentucky Derby, as is the case now. He's sitting on the outside looking in. But in addition to Instant Coffee in that spot, you had the Remsen winner, WNL, among uh, other horses that have done good running at uh, the allowance level. So then jumps up, gets his first victory in October, uh, and then ran on the Stars of Tomorrow card 
uh, on November 26th, the same day as the Kentucky Jockey Club, and was in an extremely salty allowance race, which was won by Confidence Game, the Rebel winner. Underneath him in that spot was Hit Show, who is a horse I personally like. We're not going to rank him on this Derby Power 5, but I personally like Hit Show quite a bit. So second in that salty allowance at Churchill Downs, then popped back up in the Holy Bull, won that race in good order uh, over not the best group of horses, and the, the time didn't come back great. It wasn't a great um, metric race for him, but then followed that up. I thought he improved well to run second behind Forte. He was never going to beat Forte in that spot, and I think he. Im- but I do think he improved from his allowance into uh, or from his allowance into his Holy Bull, at least on talent. Metric certainly wouldn't indicate that, but I do think by all accords he improved from the Holy Bull into the Fountain of Youth. Both Eric and I have him as our choice in the Arkansas Derby, and I think he makes a lot of sense if you're going to project improvement onto a horse like him, like we have done. So he is our number nine horse on this list. And I'll go back to Eric for number eight. And we'll go from rocket can to go rocket ride for the eighth horse in this Derby power 10 go rocket ride. Another very lightly raced runner, but a horse with a world of potential for connections that don't typically go this route, which is why I think he is even more impressive. He's trained by Richard Mandela. We know how much he likes to take his time with horses, but go rocket ride was a spendy young horse. First time out, absolutely blitzed a group going three quarters at Santa Anita, and then they jumped right into grade two company. Now, I think part of that was because there wasn't going to be an allowance race for him in California, just no horses to make that happen. So they took their shot in the grade two, and this horse spread a very, very valiant second as the favorite, no less, uh, but he was up there pressing a very, very tough pace. And the fact he didn't even get to make the lead probably hurt his chances as well. And even coming into the stretch, it looked like he was going to lay it down, but he fought on hard was only beaten two and a half lengths by practical move. And now this horse, who clearly was able to handle two turns and a lot of pressure and adversity for the first time, will go into the Santa Anita Derby where he'll uh, be in a smaller field that might have less pace. So there's a good chance he'll uh, be able to fire as good, if not even a little bit better in that race. And with a one-two finish, certainly could make the Kentucky Derby. And Richard Mandela, of course, is being a little cautious at this point. He said, you know, we either need to win for sure or have good excuses for running second. Uh, to actually ship to Louisville, but with with this horse's credentials, even just from two races and how he's progressed so far uh, and how the race looks like it might shape up for him, very reasonable to think he will will fit the Richard Mandela's criteria to make that move across the country for the first Saturday in May. So he's a very intriguing prospect by these standards. Got a great pedigree, too, on him to uh, eventually stretch out. Physically, he's not the most imposing horse, but no doubt in my mind he'll get the distances just fine, and obviously have a great chance to solidify himself probably he could even rise himself up this list should we do it a a few weeks from now with a big big performance it's just still has some stuff to prove but where he stands at the moment he's a horse that you even have to consider despite just only two starts and now we're going to move on to number nine on this list and i referenced confidence game when we were talking about Rocket can, and I'm, we're going to go to Confidence Game now at number seven, the winner of the Rebel. It was a nice uh, winning effort in the Rebel, beat Red Route 1, uh, a horse who we're not going to rank on this list uh, just because both of us are a little bit doubtful that he's going to make the Kentucky Derby. If we had an 11, Red Route 1 would have been our number 11, uh, so I guess you could say he was the next horse out, but um, very nice victory that he had in the Rebel, and then also Reincarnate. Um, who we may or may not have on this list later, uh, was also beaten behind Confidence Game in that spot. So from b- before the Rebel, you look back to the LeCompte effort. Um, he ran third behind Instant Coffee, who I already talked about uh, a little bit earlier. And then two Phils, who just last weekend won the Ruby in very good fashion. And then he won that Stars of Tomorrow allowance uh, over Rocket Can. So some good back class for him. Really only one bad effort, and that was the Iroquois. And I can usually forgive, you know, for this kind of horse, I can usually forgive that early two-turn stakes effort. It was a weird race for a lot of horses. Didn't work out uh, for Jace's Road, who subsequently bounced out of that won the gun runner and then was third in the Louisiana Derby this past weekend. So um not out not unusual and certainly given the resume that Confidence Game has put forward, two wins and uh, a good stakes placing in um a, an allowance, a good allowance and then obviously the rebel. So Confidence Game makes a lot of sense. Um metrics he's not one of the best horses in the crop, but he's also not among the worst uh in there. So 
in when I say metrics, I'm referencing speed figures. Um, to, just to put that out there, even though I don't really put too much. Uh, of credence into that, but I think confidence game is a very good horse going towards the Kentucky Derby. Uh, he'll presumably be running next weekend in the bluegrass, so we'll get another opportunity to see if he builds further off of that, and the one thing that uh, could also be mentioned is Keith DeSormo wasn't very optimistic about the horse personally going into the race, and he talked about that in the post-race, so maybe that's even more of a credence to the talent that Confidence Game has, that while his trainer may not have had him ready for the race, he still was able to win it, so uh, that's certainly another thing to keep into account, and I'll go back to Eric now for number six on this list. At number six, we'll go overseas to Derma Sotodake, the winner of the UAE Derby. A very impressive winner and a horse who has continually improved throughout his career. He made a handful of starts in Japan and made an impression when actually a uh, Japanese rode to the Kentucky Derby points race uh, before shipping to the Middle East for two starts this year. First ran in the Saudi Derby where he rallied really well to be third and was kind of just best of the rest. It's easily the best way to describe it, going a mile, which, for one, probably a little too short for him, but two, uh, the top two in that race just kind of got away, if you remember, if you go back and watch replay. Top two finish in there, in there just stepped out on the turn and never looked back. So Derma Sotogake certainly rallied well to be third and was not beaten too far. And then the UAE Derby, stretching back out to two turns, handled it very nicely, was actually hustled to the lead, and it was the first time in his career he made the lead, and he coasted around there, uh, now, it is worth noting that uh, historically at May Dawn, if the sun is up or it's early in, in the card, uh, it's more favorable to be fourthly placed or on the lead. And that's exactly where this horse was. He rode a rail that stayed very firm throughout the early races, really every race except the Dubai World Cup. Being fourthly placed and on the rail was definitely uh, beneficial to anybody who took advantage of that. So something to note, but the talent's absolutely there. He's won. Four, in four of his last five starts, two really good wins. He's beaten all the other Japanese horses that will be shipping over the least three in total, um, at least as things stand at the moment. So certainly a horse with plenty of potential, a horse who's won going a mile in 316, so you can imagine distance won't be the problem. And I mentioned that he was on the lead. Well, that still doesn't discount the three wins that were from off the pace, so we know he can be versatile uh, in terms of tactics. So tons of positives on that front. It's just I think the biggest question is, how much do you? Uh, how much of his blowout win last time was purely because of the setup, and also how handle shipping over? Because it is it is still a fact that the UAE Derby has failed to be a productive prep year over year. And even though the quality of those horses might be getting better and better, uh, they still have to prove they can handle that ship and that quick turnaround from their last start. So a fascinating horse, a horse who will deserve his due uh, come Derby Day, but a horse that still has pre- plenty to prove despite a huge win last time. And now we're going to go to number five, and that's two fills, the winner of the Jeff Ruby Stakes last weekend. A very solid victory for him uh, after a third in the Risen Star. And this is a horse who's been very battle-tested. Um, started off very early at Churchill Downs in a Ju- uh, June maiden race. I can throw that out a couple of races in Colonial and up at Minnesota. A run in the Breeders' Futurity where you look at the Breeders' Futurity, he was seventh in that spot, but very Good group of horses that were in that spot. I can forgive him for running seventh in there because there were um, there were solid horses in there. And then he followed that up with a very emphatic victory in the street sense at Churchill on the first Stars of Tomorrow card. And then three starts this year, a couple of them at the fairgrounds, one of them behind uh, the or one of them behind Instant Coffee in LeCompte. Again, Instant Coffee, if he had been in the Risen Star, we would have been able to rank him on this list, but since it looks like he's not going to make the Kentucky Derby, Instant Coffee's not on this list, but uh, was in the Risen Star where it's kind of a weird, I, I still don't understand what happened in the Risen Star, but it just really set up for the two horses that finished in front of him in that spot, but he really took it to another level when he won last weekend in the Jeff Ruby at Turfway by five and a quarter lengths uh, over Major Dude, who's a good turf horse in his own right. The big issue with uh, two, uh, two fills, and the reason why I uh, lobbied to rank him at this uh, spot in the list is because I I'm wondering how much of the victory last time at Turfway was given that given his pedigree, he's probably 
a, a, his best surface is probably that all-weather synthetic surface at Turfway in the Jeff Ruby. And he's also not a horse that takes well to kick back, which he didn't have to deal with in the Jeff Ruby. So things to think about with him, which is why even though he got a nice speed figure in that race and he won by five lengths, there are horses that we will rank in front of him that their last effort was not as impressive as that victory by two fills. Just some things to think about with him going forward into his next starts. And up next, we will move to the Todd Pletcher barn, and we'll start with Tappet Trice, of course, the winner of the Tampa Bay Derby and a horse who has rattled off three wins in a row after running a very strong race on debut, which if you've been a longtime listener to Racing Rundown, you know I've said that. It's really a it, kind of a good thing if Todd Pletcher runners don't do well first time out because they probably need longer and they probably need more experience, and that fits the bill very much so for Tappet Trice, who after losing on debut came out with a very stylish winner uh, of his second start, and actually beat Slim Mahoney, who's one of the favorites for the Wood Memorial, and then went down to Florida and has rattled off two in a row, both in 2023. An allowance win uh, that featured some horses that'll be, you know, that have been in other derby preps. And then finally, that Tampa Bay Derby, which granted the field was pretty weak, but how he did it was so impressive, making up a lot of ground on a track that it's not always easy to close on and powering through the line by you know, two lengths as the one to two favorite and is now headed towards the bluegrass. Well, where, although it'll be a tough field, he will certainly be the favorite there. And uh, as long as he finishes in the money, I would think he would have a good chance to win, if not run a really close second. But no matter what, he's in the Derby anyway. And I'm sure with a, a strong enough performance, Todd Fletcher will put him in the starting gate regardless. But a really nice horse, a really well-bred horse by Tappet out of a Dunkirk mare, a horse who is going to keep getting better and better as the distances get longer. So he's a really intriguing horse for all of these reasons. Uh, it's just the big thing is, is kind of staying out of his own way and, and having some pace. And he likes to make one big run. Of course, that'll hurt a horse who's in a paceless race. So that'd be my biggest knock on him. But other than that, he's big, sturdy. Of course, who can definitely handle a 20-horse field and a four, and, uh, uh, mile and a quarter when the time comes. And now we're going to move on to the other Todd Pletcher uh, starter horse in the Kentucky Derby right now, and that's Kings Barnes. And I'm also making the assumption that uh, Major Dude, hopefully, uh, in in my case, because I don't want him to be in the Kentucky Derby, but hopefully will not be there. But uh, looking at Kings Barnes, a very similar start to his career to that of his stablemate Tappet Trice, a couple of Florida maiden at Gulfstream and allowance at Tampa. That, and he siphoned both of those into a very good victory in the Louisiana Derby last weekend. Now, the criticism on that for many people has been that he did kind of trip out in that spot, and that's certainly true of him, but at the same time, uh, Tappet, or I'm mixing them up now, Kings Barnes uh, had a good record going into that, and I thought that in the specific with, with specific respect to the Louisiana Derby, uh, it was a masterful ride there by Flavian Pratt to give him the breather um, in front there, and then he was able to slip the field uh, going into the far turn, and he won the race comfortably. Um, this is also a horse that, at least at Tampa, showed that he could rate a little bit, so he doesn't necessarily have to be a horse that's going to be a committed front runner. even more so the case in his maiden victory. My big concern about him is he's, he is an inexperienced horse, and I don't like inexperienced horses like him, especially these horses with three starts going into the Kentucky Derby. Unless they're an absolute superstar standout, I'm usually very dubious on them, Uh, in a prospect of being able to win the Kentucky Derby. But uh, going into the Kentucky Derby and his overall talent, Kings Barnes is certainly one of the better horses in the crop and uh, will absolutely be a horse to keep an eye on uh, going into races in the summer. But at least right now, the talent is certainly there with him. And that's uh, something that certainly does go a long way. And I recognize that. At number two, we will have Practical Move, easily the leading contender from the West Coast heading in to this derby, a horse who's won back-to-back grade twos in really impressive fashion, including the San Felipe last time. That was a tough field, tough circumstances for any horse in there, and he won with rather ease. It was a, a strong performance from a horse who definitely, despite being a grade two winner, two back, had a lot to prove, but he, he moved himself up in a big, big way. Now he's he's sitting on three wins in his last four starts. His only loss in that span coming against some you know a really nice sprinter, and having a meltdown. So he's getting better and better as time progresses, which is very important for the Kentucky Derby. And he's already in the starting gate on points. And I'm sure, uh, with once again, another decent performance 
comes in and need a derby time, he'll do just fine. Like I said, there, there'll be horses that are going to be facing him in that spot that are improving, and they'll be better than if they whether they faced a practical move or not in that last out. Uh, they're they're going to be better, and they're going to give him a tougher go. But if practical move continues to take the steps forward he's been taking recently, then it won't matter because he'll just be as good. So he's a very talented horse who's doing it all right at the moment, and if he stays healthy and, and keeps running his race and keeps improving, most importantly, he'll be a big player, not just next time he runs, but in the Kentucky Derby. And now we're going to move on to the presumed number one horse that we'd have on this, and uh, Forte inherits that from Arabian Knight, who was our leader uh, for the past couple of iterations of this series that we did. And it, it, there's really no reason why he's not number one at this point, uh, easy winner of the fountain of youth where he wasn't really asked for anything. And I read talked about how he felt that he had gotten better from two to three, which is certainly a very scary prospect. If you're a, if your connections of a horse who wants to try to beat Forte, if he got better from two to three, because he ran a couple of really good races last year as a two year old, his hopeful was a very weird race, which is why he was, uh, you know, I, I can't say that he was doubted going into the Breeders' Fraternity because he was still well backed in that spot, but logins off of a maiden win took a lot more play than him. And then even then, uh, Forte was not favored in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, but he won both of those races in very good fashions. Uh, the other criticism of him or the other concern is, is that he doesn't have the most sure thing to turn pedigree, but I really don't think it's that big of a deal at this point. This is a horse that since the hopeful has been consistently running at two turns, got a couple of two turn starts at Keeneland to end the year. I think it was a very smart decision by Todd Pletcher to run him in the British Futurity as opposed to the traditional New York route from the hopeful into the champagne. Obviously you get the Breeders' Cup there and then running at Gulfstream la uh, last time in the Fountain of Youth. He did draw wide in the Florida Derby. Todd Pletcher's not super enthusiastic ask about that but this is a the, the Florida Derby specifically a race that Forte should win with not too much of a difficulty in that uh, in that order and from there if he wins the Florida Derby um you know this will obviously be depending on how he win how he wins it but if he wins it anywhere close to the ease at which he won the Fountain of Youth with which I would be very surprised if he doesn't, uh, given the way that he's coming into this race, then Forte is going to be a very formidable horse going into the Kentucky Derby. I'm not going to say, you know, he's going to be any kind of crazy price there, but he will be a very solid favorite. Should he do that? I think he is a very deserving favorite right now for the Kentucky Derby, and I think that he's just a, a, a very talented three-year-old in many aspects. So certainly the leader right now in the clubhouse. And with that being said, that's going to be it for our top 10 on the Kentucky Derby Trail. We'll do another one of these in a couple of weeks uh, after the preps are all finished. Uh, and we will see how many of these horses will stay in this list, if the order will change, and if there will be any new names that will drop into this. With that being said, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.